Hi, I'm Dorfus, and I got back from Japan not too long ago. It had been years since we'd seen our friends there, and I was thrilled to finally check out the game centers that still remained post-pandemic. Unfortunately, places like Mikado here are dying out. The spaces that were once retro game centers have transitioned to other businesses, or they're in the process of becoming more about crane games and gashapon. Honestly, I'd argue that if you're going to Japan for retro games, you should probably spend more time in game centers than maybe cruising around Akihabara for overpriced Game Boys and Famicom stuff. Japan is an amazing country, and exploring off the beaten path in addition to the Universal Studios parks and the conveyor belt sushi will give you a way more fulfilling experience there. The next time we go, we're probably going to rent a car and we'll see a little bit more of the countryside. I'm really looking forward to that. Back home, I've got limited space and I wanted to make my office as game center as humanly possible while still keeping my workspace. So here's what I've done. Now, what my office lacks in dark and dankness, it makes up for in tininess. I've calculated the wall you see before you to be filled as much as possible with these four game setups. The view looks remains largely unchanged from its state several years ago, but the other setups are either entirely new or uh, uh, since then they've been substantially reconfigured. So hey, let's check out the Blast City first. This actually belonged to a friend who bought it pre-pandemic. He was kind enough to trade other gaming-related nonsense for it in its non-working state. The control panel? Entirely new. It's an actual Sanwa part that is still available. Inside, this machine was actually missing an I.O., so I've converted it to USB. These Brook Ultimate controllers can handle pretty much anything I plug into them, provided that I can convert the machine signal into a USB-friendly one. A little control board allows the adjustment to the monitor. Now, by default in my office, the Blast City is usually set up as a Dreamcast. I can play a Thomas Wave and most Naomi games this way. Just pick your game at boot up and you're ready to go. So some people complained in my Viewlix video that I shouldn't be connecting a Neo Geo to a modern IPS panel. Look, I totally agree. Now I've got a four slot Neo Geo behind this barn door on my wall and changing cartridges in there is quick and easy. It's way faster than going into the Blast City itself. A switch behind the coin door allows for fast switching to the RGB, Neo Geo, video, and audio. Controls are handled by a USB switch box. If you're curious about how I make my USB switch boxes, please check out the video I made a few years ago on doing that. One weird little quirk, however, is that the scan lines on this monitor, because it's a tri-sync, are a little bit thicker than they would be on something like Oh, say, a, a Sony Trinitron or a 15K monitor. That is a downside in some situations. I do like the look on other monitors better, but having them in this format on a Blast City is just really kind of fun. Oh, and if you're curious about how the Blast City panel works for Neo Geo controls, you know, six buttons versus three buttons, uh, A is here, B is here, C is here, and D is here. This feels most comfortable to me, and uh, that's generally how I found it handled in the game centers in Tokyo. Skipping over the Vulix for now, we find ourselves at the most unassuming of my game center machines. This 27-inch Sony Trinitron has been RGB SCART modded to accept a much higher quality signal. Then it's connected to a Mr. FPGA and a Sega Saturn. They look phenomenal on it. We also tend to play a lot of PS1 light gun games in here. Really incredible things can be done with a Mr. Snack connection these days. And now closest to the wall, we arrive at the new Net City. I think I spent more time with vertical bullet hell games than anything else in Japan, and I would actually say that I spend more time with the new Net City than anything else in the room. It's one of those really specific experiences that's extremely difficult to replicate any other way. This poor machine has gone through a number of changes over the years. When the screen that I got it with died, I added an LG Dula 16 by 18 display to it. I always did say that if I found the right monitor, I'd change it back. Incredibly, I did find the right monitor. A Toshiba Tri-Sync. That's what would have been in it originally. Installing it though, 
that totally sucked. I had to replace the frame it came on and perform a full tube swap. I'm not gonna get into it here because I don't think you wanna hear me ugly cry for 45 minutes, but it's done now and we're never doing it again. Now, fortunately, all the work that I did on the front end for the new NetCity still works. A quick press of a button will kick you back out of whatever you're playing and into the selection screen. Because this monitor is 480p, you can actually run 4x3 content like Street Fighter 3 here. I'm pretty sure that this will make people really angry and raise questions about my decision making though, so uh, you know, let's move on. Oh, okay. But let's say instead of playing brawlers, fighting games, bullet hell games, anything of the genres we've looked at so far, let's say that you want to do some driving. A hallmark of any good game center in Japan, or I guess anywhere else for that matter, is having a cabinet with a wheel attached to it. I've got no more room in here for more machines. So I found this inexpensive racing stand and I matched the height to the front of the Vulix. You can plug this Logitech wheel into the PS5 or the PC inside the Vulix, so it's pretty flexible for a variety of modern and retro content. The wheel has really good force feedback in Gran Turismo, and this little stand has a special shelf for the shifter. Now, I, I have noticed some weird, inconsistent stuff with this wheel in some Windows games. Uh, for example, uh, Forza Horizon works fine, uh, with force feedback even, but the monitor times out as if it isn't in use, uh, even while it's getting input from the wheel. Setting inputs up for some Steam ports uh, of things like Crazy Taxi, that crashes when I try to boot it with this wheel attached. The best bet for older content seems to be emulation and then manually assigning your inputs. I would be willing to bet if you didn't care about Gran Turismo or uh, you know any PlayStation content, you could probably get an Xbox Windows compatible wheel and you'd save yourself a lot of hassle and time. I know there are fancier wheels that will give you a better experience, but you know, this is what I've got and it works really well for my limited usage. I'm having a blast with this thing. And that kind of gives you an overview of this room and how all the things in it work. There's a lot of stuff packed into a pretty tight space here, but it's not impossible to get four or five people in here for a tournament or just to play a variety of different things all at once. I am curious though, what would you do differently in this space? Is there some other arrangement of the machines that might work better? Uh, heck, you know, would, would you get rid of all the candy cabs and just trade it for a wall of Ulixes? Having now dealt with the nonsense associated with older tube technology, I can't say I haven't given it a thought from time to time. Do you think I'm missing any important hookups for some, you know, particular machine that you used to love in arcades? I definitely have put the Densha De Go train controller for the Switch in my Amazon Japan cart a couple of times now. I think it's only a matter of time until the Vulix adds another vehicle to its repertoire. Something that I didn't really cover here at all is my record collection, or any of my vintage audio gear. Apart from this Technics 1200, I don't have a lot of that stuff in this room, and I'd be curious to see if anybody I don't know, wanted a walkthrough of our 1970s and 1980s JBL Jazz Kisa style audio setup. I, I mean, if you made it this far and you want me to make something about that, drop me a line in the comments. I've also got a few more arcade machine projects waiting in the wings, although they don't really have a permanent home at the moment. I recently found a Japanese Space Invaders table from Taito, and I have been trying to figure out the best way to set that up for my uses, and uh, also trying to figure out if my wife would notice it if I snuck it into the living room. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.